I don't know about you, but I could really fancy, well, a slice of pizza. My name is Jess B. This is my tech department. Let's get it. Now I spotted this machine on Wilhaben for just 110 euros and what caught my eye was that this was a complete system featuring not just the base unit but also the original accessories pack that came with the machine complete with all the original software discs. This rather nice Mac Image Writer laser printer and best of all, a gorgeous portrait display. Now it's unusual to see these types of display still around to be honest. So I headed off to pick up my prize, got a 10 euro discount for some reason, and brought it back here to the tech department to explore this somewhat different system. The Mac LC was introduced in 1990 alongside the cheaper Mac Classic and the more expensive Macintosh 2SI. These were Apple's attempts to capture the lower end of the market which they'd realised they'd been neglecting. The LC or low cost Mac would sit between the Mac Classic and the 2SI and would cost around $2,499 US. For that, well, you've got a base computer and very little else. Displays cost extra. However, the LC proved very popular with small businesses, especially those needing more power than the Mac Classic. The 68020 CPU was quicker, the 2MB of built-in RAM and upgrade, and the 40MB SCSI hard drive was just nice to have. It was easy to upgrade too, with a toolless design that made taking parts in and out of the uh, machine easy. However, expansion was limited to a single PDS or processor direct slot. Combine that with the slim case and the LC earned the nickname The Pizza Box. And I can see why. With the machine all connected up, let's turn on the monitor and hope it works. And it does, great, no bangs, no explosions, that's good. What about the LC itself? Well, I push the soft power button, check the switch at the back, but nope, nothing. All I can hear is a tiny little clicking coming from the back of the machine. Yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised to discover this machine's not working, despite it being in pretty good condition. It is, after all, well over 30 years old. And I think I know what the problem is. Having connected everything up, I now take the time to disconnect everything and get into the machine itself. Again, this is nice and easy. It's a toolless design. To get inside, all we have to do is lift these two tabs and then the case just lifts away. Yes, this is from an era when Apple actually let you not only get inside your machine but upgrade it and try and fix it. I miss that. With the case open, let's take a moment to have a look inside. You can see we have an optional extra card that I have no idea about, I don't know what that's for, and two extra sticks of RAM. So this is actually a fairly well spec machine, so there should be 4 meg of RAM on it plus whatever that card is. Now, I'm fairly certain that the power supply needs recapping. It's a common fault with LCs and this one is probably no exception given the ticking that's coming from it. To remove the power supply, well, that's actually fairly simple. Just unplug the plug from the main board and then there are two clips at the back, pull them aside and the whole power supply just lifts out. It's that simple. I love toolless design cases, I miss them. With the power supply out of the case, it's just a matter of undoing the screws and uh, yeah, just basically separating the steel case around it so that we can get access to the power supply inside. There are two screws on the bottom, two on one side and a further screw at one end. Now it can be a kind of fiddly job to release it and it took me actually longer than it should have but eventually the case does come free and I can get access to at least the circuit board. Now whenever you're working on power supplies it's always a good idea to make sure that the large capacitors that have the mains voltage in them are discharged. And I'm just going to check this one. My leads are the wrong way around, but you can see that has over 100 volts on it. And 
that's all good that's that's enough to give you quite the shock so i'm just going to make sure that's discharged before proceeding any further with that cap discharged i can now start removing the capacitors from the board now normally i would take out them one at a time and replace them but today i have in front of me a high definition picture that shows me each cap and the value so that makes my job a lot easier and honestly it's a good thing i did because this board may have had a little bit of a leaking cap issue let me show you there you go with all the caps removed look at all that wonderful electrolytic juice Blah. that is that is a terrible board Fortunately, it'll be easy enough to clean up, but ugh, just with a point, take a look at these caps. That one's definitely leaked. You can see the electrolytic on it, but take a look at this one. It's crusty, man. Ah, that is disgusting. So yeah, I can see why the power supply wasn't working. Right, let's get the caps back in the board. But first, we're going to get our IPA and get it cleaned up and... Believe me, it takes a lot of IPA and a lot of cotton swabs to get this clean. And then I can start adding the caps back in. Now, if you're curious, I'm using a guide I found online from recapamac.com.au. It's run by a guy called Bruce. He is well known within the Mac community. I'm sure, you know, you know him well before you know me. And I can't recommend it enough. He has recapping guides for almost all of the Macs you can ever want. So check it out. I'll put a link in the description below. With the machine back together, let's test it out and uh, also realize that I have not actually got any sound on it. But I switched the machine on. I can't, I'm kind of nervous because I don't get a chime. However, it does power up. Yay! So our recapping guide worked, but oh dear. That rolling screen. Well, that's not good. And it indicates that there is another fault future gesture and i just want to let you know there isn't another fault i mean there is but not with the video display and we'll find out more about that later just know that i've done something stupid we'll pick it up in a minute but for now let's dive back into the case because also we're not chiming and here's the reason why just like every other capacitor in the power supply every electrolytic on the board has leaked and leaked badly this is just awful it's not just this area of the board either if we take a look over towards the power supply end well the story is pretty much the same thing they all have to be changed time for montage now before i get the caps off the first thing i want to do is at least try and clean up the area so it's a lot of isopropyl alcohol brushes cotton buds the works and hopefully i can just kind of get a lot of the gunk out of the way Ugh. Now I'm replacing these capacitors with tantalums as opposed to electrolytics because th they don't leak. However, at this size, especially for those 10 microfarad capacitors, well, they're really small. We're talking three millimeter. But if we take your time and just proceed carefully, the job can be done. It's just a matter of being careful and not rushing. There's one final job I want to complete before I put the computer back together and test if it's working properly and that is sort out this fan. Now it is rather noisy and I suspect it needs a new bearing. It is probably going to have to be changed but for now the least I can do is change it. So checking it out it's incredibly loud but hopefully a good cleaning will help sort it. Again, thanks to the LC's ease of use, removing the fan is as simple as unplugging it and then pulling two tabs apart and lifting the fan away. It's so simple. And after a quick clean, we'll get it all back together. Oh, there's a lot of dust in there. You. All right, let's see if we've actually solved it. So let's do a bit of power here. I think that 
that should give us power, right? Chani, so she's happy, but do we get a picture? No, I don't think so. That looks like it's completely rolling again. Well, the plus side is now we can Yeah, let's see if I can get a pair of socks. So, yeah. We have a complete and utter rolling picture. I have no idea what to do. Except, of course, I do. At least in hindsight. I'm sure many of you were screaming at the screen when you saw me plug this in. You may remember that little extension board that I didn't know what it was. Well, it turns out it was part of this monitor's setup. That's right, it was a small video card designed specifically for the LC to use this high-res monitor. Without me realizing it, I plugged the machine in as I'd expect with the monitor cable in the monitor port and the LC simply doesn't have enough RAM to run a display this high. What I thought the problem was, well, I started chasing the H-Sync, the V-Sync and all the other signals coming out of there and spent about a good three hours following traces, checking back, going all the way back to the chip and finding nothing. Idiot. Right. I hope voiceover me has explained everything I did wrong. So it turns out that little card that I removed and then completely forgot about was the display card specifically made for this monitor. I didn't know and I had no idea that these machines actually came with that. I only found out because I asked on a Discord forum with some Mac enthusiast friends of mine whether or not they knew anything about what was causing the issue because I was convinced it was the H-Sync signal coming from the onboard display and someone said to me oh I don't think it can actually run that monitor it's very limited however they wanted to know the make of it I couldn't remember so when I came in I grabbed the manuals and discovered well you can see what I discovered plugging the car back in and yeah we have a fully working system all that's left to do now is get this case cleaned up, give it a little, a little bit of retro brightening, I think, while we've still got a little bit of um, early autumn sun, and then find a replacement for the hard drive, because it's missing. I have an idea about that, though, which should be fun. Then I thought what we could do, we could take all the discs that are in the original accessory pack, and let's reinstall this machine back to where it was working way back in the 1990s. Then... Maybe we'll hook up that printer and see if that works as well, because I have no idea. And it's an old serial printer that will only work with old serial Max. So we'll find out again. I hope you've really enjoyed this video. I enjoyed doing it, despite the three hours I sent myself down the wrong path. If you did, please consider giving us a thumbs up and uh, subscribing, because it costs you nothing and it helps me out immensely, because I'm only a small channel. So... If you didn't enjoy it, please consider doing those things. All I have to say is down below is our social thingies. And uh, when it comes to all computers, remember to rediscover, reconnect, and uh, buy the bargain. Because you never know how much fun you can have for 100 bucks, even if it does take three hours to work out you're wrong. Until next time, cheers.